Right, welcome back. In this video, we'll have a quick look at the life cycle and how we can implement the life cycle to work for our app as well. So the life cycle of a Flutter application. So in your lib folder, I want you to right click there at the top and say new file. And the file we want to create will be called, well, you can call it what you like. I'm going to call it life cycle. And this will become a widget. So this life cycle dot dot we will use as a normal widget. So at the top, I will use import and we want to use this material dot dot from the Flutter package. Okay, now inside of this, I'm gonna create a new widget. So I'm gonna start typing stateless or stateful. So we're gonna start with a stateful widget. And the class I'm gonna call life cycle. Okay, so for this life cycle class, I want to also have a final widget and let's call this one child. Okay, then uh, because we have this child here as well, they say all final variables must be initialized, but child isn't. So as part of the parameter list here, we can just go and add a required this dot child. Right, so when we use this life cycle, uh, life cycle state and life cycle. Okay, that's taking care of all the spelling mistakes. Okay, so this will become my widget called life cycle. And you can see it will take in a widget. And the only thing I want to do here in the build is I want to actually just return this widget. So I'm going to go to widget and that is the life cycle at the top and I'm gonna to refer, to, refer to child. So whatever you place this life cycle over, it will just basically display that thing. So this in itself, the build will not do anything. It will just take the child and carry on with the widget tree with the child. But everything that comes after this return, which means everything from the child down, we will then look for life cycle events that will happen. Now, in order for this to work, for our life cycle state, we will need to add with widgets binding observer. Now, if you hover over this widget binding observer, let me just hover over it. You'll see it's the interface for classes that register with the widgets layer binding. This class can be extended directly to get default uh, behaviors for all the handlers or be used with the implements keyword. And then it goes on and it says the stateful widget implements the parts of the state and the widgets binding observer protocols necessary to react to the application lifecycle messages. And then they give you an example of a class here on how it should look. Uh, you can see that we need, um, well, they've got, they've got this init state where they say widgets binding dot instance dot add observer. They've got dispose where we dispose of the observer. And they have a method called or a function called did change app lifecycle state. So these are all things that we need to add now to make this work. So let's get started. So inside of this, just before your build, I want to use that init state function. So for the init state, now it normally says we should implement the init state there, but it's always good for init state to run first before you do anything else. So after init state, this is where you'll put your widgets binding. So I'm going to use widgets binding dot instance can be null. So we're just going to force like they did in the example. We add an observer here and the observer will just be this specific class because it is a widget binding observer. Okay, so that's all we need to do for init state. Then there's also dispose. Now for dispose, yes, this, this is correct. We first dispose what we want to dispose and then you call super dot dispose. So the correct way of doing it in its state must have the super dot in its state first and then you do yours. With dispose, you first do yours and then you call super dot dispose. Okay, so for the dispose, we will just go to widgets binding again, dot instance, dot remove the observer and the observer will just be this, right? And then we need a function that's called did change app lifecycle state. So you can choose it there and you can see it overrides and it implements this function for you. Did change app lifecycle state. 
and you can see it's the application life state and you can see if you hover over it these are the states that an application can be in. The values below describe notifications from the operating system. Applications should not expect to always receive all possible notifications. For example, if the user pulls out the battery from the device, no notification will be sent before the application is suddenly terminated. Okay, uh, I can't really go into that. So let's just click and see if we can go into it. Okay, and then they say the application is visible and responding to user um, input if it's resumed. There's paused, uh, there's detached, and so forth. So you can maybe go and read a bit more about the app life cycle state. So the only thing that I can actually do here is when something changes in the app life cycle, we can actually try and save. So for this example, we can probably just go and say, let's call a wait. And I want to use provider in here. So let's just go with importing provider. So I'm going to say await, and because I'm using await, this function may become asynchronous. Okay, I'm just going to remove this one also. So I'm going to say await, go to context, dot read. I want to read from the to-do service, and I want to call save the to-do entry. Now, for the username, we're going to go to context, dot read again. This time we're going to read from the user service. On the user service, we're going to get the current user and get the current user's email. Just make this a bit bigger. And then we are now not in the UI, so I'm going to set this to false. So that is why I added that one value there, so that we can use it here without showing any progress bar. So maybe one check that we can do before this, because we are forcing this current user to not be null, is we can check this first. If the context dot read uh, from the user service dot current user is not equal to null, then we can do the following. So then we will do this part, that whole await, cut it out, and we'll paste it in there. Okay, so just to make sure that the current user is not null. So if the user is still logged in and we still got the content, then we can do this. And you can see even if I remove this, it's got a problem with it. So it's not picking up everything for null safety. But in any case, we are checking if the user is not null. And if it's not null, then we can save when something changes in the app lifecycle. Right, so that's basically all we need here. So for now, let's just go and check out the app. So uh, this one will run every time there's an app lifecycle change. So for example, if I click one of these buttons and I try and swipe it away or something like that, this function will run. And what we will do is to check if the current user is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, we will save his data. Okay, so in order to implement this, where will we add this? Well, as high up as possible. So let's go to the main dot dot. And you can see there's my material app. So everything underneath my material app, I would like to have in this life cycle. So I'm going to add the control dot there, and I'm going to wrap it with a widget. And that widget will be life cycle. I think I call it life cycle. Um, yeah, let's use that one. Just make sure it's the correct one now. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, good. So this is the life cycle then. I want to have over material app. So the rest will still continue because uh, this one just takes the material app and builds the material app. So that's fine. Okay, so let's run this quickly. So I'm going to save and let's run the app quickly. Right, so you can see my app is running now and uh, I've created a new virtual device. So this one should work now. Okay, so let's look at this state quickly. I want to show you something here. So I'm going to print out this state. So every time it runs or it does something, we will print out that state. Okay, so I'm going to open up this debug console. So it's the state object there. So I'm going to click on this one and you can see it says app, uh, app lifecycle state inactive paused. If I click on it again, you can see it's now resumed. Okay, if I click on this one, inactive paused. Right? Now I can click on this one again, click on it, it resumed again. 
Okay, I can, uh, let's not use the back button now because it's going, going, going to go back to the login screen. So you can see there's different life cycle states that happens. There's inactive, there's paused, there's resumed. And uh, in most of these cases, or both of these cases, if I click on this, you can see it went inactive and then paused. If I click on this one, it went inactive, then paused. Okay, so maybe where you want to put this, this part here where we save, could probably be in inactive. So it's up to you. So how do we do this? So we know the state contains those values. It's either app life cycle state or inactive or paused or resumed. Okay, so it's one of those. So let's have a look at how we can implement this. So we can maybe go and say, if the current user is not equal to null, and we know the state is equal to app lifecycle state dot inactive. So let's use the and there. So if the state is inactive, and at the same time we know that the current user is not equal to null, then and only then do we save the to-do entry. So the way we had it, every time that we click on this, doesn't matter where it goes, it will save automatically. So we can just say, well, maybe you only want to have it uh, if it's paused, but you can see it's paused in any case everywhere. So just have a look at these app lifecycle states and you can compare with them. So obviously you can have a switch statement that checks for resumed, for inactive, for paused and so forth. But it seems to me as mostly we go into inactive first before it gets paused and so forth. So we want to save it as fast as possible. So we, as soon as we get into an active, we will start saving it. Okay, so let's see if this works in backendless. So I'm going to move this one down a bit. Let's just rerun this application now with uh, the new if statement there. Okay, so we can see currently we've got buy rice and that's the only one there. So I'm going to add a new one there and let's say buy food. I'm going to save it. And obviously this is not saving to backendless. So you can see it's still there. Now, let's go out of this, and you can see automatically there's something happened. Okay, so if you look at this, we've got buy food. So uh, let's just tick off this one. So you can see there, for buy food, it's still a zero. It didn't change. So if I click, for example, that one, you can see it changed. So now whether the user goes and he swipes away the app, clear all, we still have the data saved successfully. Okay, so even if we open up the app now, uh, if we open it up, we should get the newest data now because we saved it. Right, everything seems fine. But here's the problem. I did not change anything now. So if I click there, again, it will update this value. It will save it again, okay? Uh, if I maybe click that, it's going to save again. So maybe there's a way for us to go and set some flags. And that's why I have included in your project, we've included shared preferences. And you remember in the pubspec.yaml, we used shared preferences there. So nobody asked that before. Why are we using shared preferences? Because we never used it anyway. Well, let's see if we can use it here. So right at the bottom, right at the bottom of your lifecycle class, you can add these two functions. Now, shared preferences has not been uh, included in this package yet, so let me just type this quickly. Uh, let's just go shared preferences, and there we've got the import. Okay, so I've got two functions here. One is to set a flag, and one is to get the flag. So I want to set the flag with a specific integer value, so maybe say um, just a zero and a one just like a boolean value so we just want to set the flag to have we changed something in the ui yes uh, then we can make it a one if we did not change anything in the ui i will make it a zero for example okay so we opening up the shared preferences and we set the check value to whatever value we pass in okay and then we can get the flag back by going to the, sh the instance of the shared preferences and getting back that check if it's null, which means that it's not been saved before, we will just send back a zero, which means no changes has been made. So I'm going to use the set check, check flag and the get check flag functions here to check whether I have changed something in the UI or not. Right, then we can go up a bit and inside of this, 
did change lifecycle state. We will go and say int, check for us, go to await, and get that check flag. So obviously the very first time this application runs, we won't be uh, uh, checking anything. So if it closes out without doing anything, we will get back a zero, no changes at all. And then in this if statement, we can maybe add another check there. We can say, if this check is equal to a one, then we know something changed on the UI. Okay, and then we want to only save the to-do entry. Okay, so if it didn't change anything, we don't want to save anything. Okay, so firstly, there must have been some changes on the UI. Secondly, uh, it must go into inactive mode. And thirdly, the current user must not be equal to null. Okay, so we're checking for three things. And then after we've saved it, we can then also go and set the flag. So I'm going to set the check flag to a zero so that it won't go into this again when it clicks again. So we're basically saying, you know what? We have changed or we have saved something. Uh, we've already updated back endless with the newest data, so we're not going to save it again. So it will make the check a zero there uh, the next time it runs and we won't have another API being used. Okay, so that's just one thing here. Obviously now we need to go to the functions where we create something new, we delete it and we change it. Okay, so for those three functions we also need to set this flag. Okay, so let's go to our to-do service. So under services let's go to the to-do service and this is the three functions that will be called. So instead of just doing what we're doing here, after we notify the listeners, we're going to set that check flag now. Because it changed, I'm going to set it to a 1. Okay, so just to indicate that something changed in the UI. So if they then click on, let's say, this button, it will go and check for that 1 and it will save. Okay, so I'm going to say set the check flag to a 1 there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Set the check flag to a 1. Okay, so now in the UI, if anything changes in the UI, I've created something new, I've deleted something, or I've toggled it to say it's done or not done, then we set that flag to a value of 1. So inside of lifecycle, if it is a 1, and we have clicked one of these buttons to take it into inactive, and the current user is not null, then we save to back this. And after saving, we make the flag a zero again. So then he must change something again before we will save it again. I hope that makes sense, maybe just a bit. Okay, so let's go back to main.dot. I'm just gonna run this again because this one was opening up after it's been closed. So let's see how this works now. Right, so now the app is running. Now let's just have a look at, you can see the updated there. Now my updated time is basically the same. It's, it is now 1.46 or 147. So let's change something. Uh, let, let's add something new here. Let's call this one fill up car, something like that. And we save. Okay, so now that flag should go to a one. Okay, so without us saving anything, let's just click there. And you can see the time updated to 13.47.34. Okay, which means I saved that fill up car. So let's have a look at that one. So you can see fill up car is there. Right, so I did not click that save button. And you can see that Boolean that we used to not show the progress bar. So the user won't even know you've actually done it for him. Okay, now let's go and make some changes. So let's look at that updated again. So it's 1347. So I'm going to make some, I'm not going to make any changes now. And I'm going to click it again. And you can see it's not updating. Okay, which means that if the user does not make a change in the UI and it goes out, we do not want to save to back in this to use up an API. Okay, so that is it for back endless and this to do app. I really hope that you've enjoyed these back endless videos. So the next set of videos that we will tackle will be Firebase. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.